Welcome to NDG. This is our Sunday morning word, and we'd like to get started early so that we can uh, try to get as, in as many scriptures and uh, the knowledge of the Word of God that we can enjoy and grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're just happy that you could join us. Uh, we think that uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and no matter what the situation is, because I don't know about you, but we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places and against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And oftentimes we think it's just people, but it's these forces that are trying to rob, steal, kill, and to destroy us and our families. We are in the world, but we are not of this world system. And the only thing that we can do is submit ourselves to God. We can resist the devil that he might flee from us. Someone posted on Facebook yesterday about the God of this world, the little G. But oh, I'm so thankful this morning that we worship and we praise the big G, the God that has all power, the God that has everything, created everything, and the God that is everywhere. In my home, I pray God in your home, in my family, as well as with your family. So it is a joy and a privilege, even though that we are fighting through struggles. Amen. Hold on, because help is on the way. He sent his word that he could uh, heal us, he could deliver us from the uh, destruction or the pitfalls that life finds us in. And I just want you to know that this is to encourage you that we can hang on to God, hold on to his unchanging hand. So we want to quickly go before the Lord in prayer and get that out of the way because without him, we can do nothing of any consequence. We need him. And I want especially for you to pray for my wife. She's in the bed sick. She's been that way for two days now, but we know God to be a healer, he's a deliverer, he's a keeper. <clears throat> so he can keep us in all our ways if we just acknowledge him. So I want you to help us in our, in our prayer. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So I want you to help pray for my wife. I know that God's got a, got a purpose in everything that he does. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the opportunity that we could petition heaven. For you are the King of kings and you're the Lord of lords. And we just ask you, amen, to allow your will, hallelujah, to be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we know that you are help to the helpless. You are hope to the hopeless. And you are faith to the unbelieving. And Lord, we just ask your presence in the midst of us as we dwell into your word this morning. Strengthen us, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Bless that man, bless that woman, bless the family, dear God. Bless that husband, bless that wife, that we might be the sons and daughters of the God that spoke this world into existence. And all these things we do ask in the mighty, the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. We want to continue <clears throat> uh, talking about the church, a family of God. And this is the third, I think, uh, video that we have, have done in regards to the church. So I'm not going to go back and start dealing with that because I, I want to talk about a particular uh, subject this morning. We've been talking about adoption how that 
we are adopted into the family of God. So we want to quickly, and it has, and I probably will be sharing uh, other scriptures, and we're going to kind of look at, and I pray that you are blessed by <clears throat> us taking a, a subject and, and continually to add to our knowledge about that subject. Those of you that are watching for the first time, I would advise you to go to YouTube and subscribe to those videos that we've already done on the church or relationships or whatever, because there are truths that we are building upon. Amen. The Bible says that it shall be precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. We're not going to get this all at one time, so you can go in. And uh, I want to uh, uh, express that the public library said that there are 32 million people that cannot read. But I want you to know a quote that Dr. Miles Monroe said. He said, those that do not read is on the same level of those that cannot read. Uh, so uh, we need to sometimes, as believers, read what God has said. We need the manual. We need this into our lives, what God has said, because he's the only one, a man that can, can keep his word. From Genesis to Revelation, he has unveiled it, his plan for, for mankind. Amen. And so, therefore, as believers, we are commanded to study the Word, not just read the Word. Reading is better than anything else, but we need to study the Word. Amen. Because this is the owner's manual. If there's ever a breakdown in your relationship, if there's a breakdown in your health, is there a breakdown in your job or wherever you go, this has the answer to it. This is the owner's manual, and he owns all of us. Amen. So we want to quickly <clears throat> begin into our study this morning, and I just want to let you know that uh, the scripture that we have uh, here, we are born, you know, I told you before, you can't join the family of God. Like some people join membership into a church or membership into a certain denomination. Those brings divisions. Jesus came to bring a, a family dedicated to him, his sons and his daughters. So first of all, we are born into the family of God. And I want to show you quickly the scripture in John 3, 5. It says, Jesus said, Except a man be born of water and the spirit, he can't enter into the kingdom of God. See, believers are born into the family of God. They are not born into a denomination. They are not born into a religion. But I have a quick question for you. What denomination was Jesus? Was he Baptist? Was he Methodist? Was he... Pentecostal, or, or, or was he a Catholic? You know, I, I want to show you a quick scripture, if you don't mind. It's found in Matthew 4.17. And in Matthew 4.17, Jesus, after he had defeated the devil, the Bible says, from that time, Jesus began to preach. So this is Jesus' message. He said, repent. Remember, a 180 degree change. Repent, a change, a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of direction. For the kingdom, hallelujah, of heaven is at hand. That's what he came to preach, that, that there is a kingdom because he is the king. He's the king of kings, and he's the lord of all lords. And lord means owner, like your landlord, you know, he where you pay rent. He's the one that owns it. Well, he is the lord of all lords, and he's the king of all kings. So, therefore, we are born 
amen, when we repent into the kingdom, not a denomination, the kingdom of God, amen. The kingdom has a constitution. This is our kingdom constitution right here, the laws and precepts of God in his kingdom, amen. Again, religion is man's attempt to reach God, but God is setting up a kingdom because a king wanted to expand from heaven to build a kingdom down here on earth. Oh, I'm so glad, amen, to know that we can be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. We just need to know the laws, the rights, and, and the privileges that we have as king's children. Amen. And so that's why I'm talking about the church. I'm, I'm talking about the ecclesia, a called out body of believers. In unity, amen, in assembly, in equality. That's what the church is. Not a black church, not a white church, but a called out body of believers. Amen. The world is, is waiting, amen, for the manifestation eh, of the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I uh, want you to know that we are not only as believers born into the kingdom, but we are also adopted into the kingdom. And I want to uh, show you a, a verse of scripture. I want you to go to Galatians, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. And I want to begin there in Galatians, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. And the Bible says, but when the fullness of time was come. See, in the Bible there, and of course you that are Bible readers and believers and scholars, you know that uh, the Bible says the wisest man that ever lived, that there is a time to be born, a time to uh, work, and a time not to work, and a time, a time for this, a time to do this, and a time for that. Everything has a time. So God, in his infinite wisdom, have perfect timing. Amen. He said when the fullness of time was come, and amen, God knows everything. He's, he's omniscient. He knows everything. He, he, he's omnipotent. He has all power, and he's omnipresent. And he said, God sent, God sent forth his son. Remember I told you whenever you see the word son, just think of flesh. Amen. The spirit was made flesh, uh, made of a woman and made under the law. Amen. So when Jesus came, he was under law. Remember, laws preserve, laws protect, laws, laws. Obedience to laws is the uh, greatest thing in the world. It'll keep us in safety. Obedience to laws. Disobedience to laws, amen, results in a Penalty. Go to the next verse. And in the fifth verse it says, to redeem. Hallelujah. That's the word that I, I want. He, he wanted to redeem, you know. And, and to redeem means to, to buy back. You see, uh, to pay a price for. To redeem them. Talking about you and I. Amen. Believers that were under the law. See, because the law doesn't have any power. A law only points out a penalty. It doesn't have any power to change. And, 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 and only the enforcement of laws is the strength of the law. There are some laws that even aren't on the books that are not enforced in our Constitution even today. So bear that in mind. To redeem them that were under the law. See, because we were under the law of what? Sin and death. Amen. The law points out our sins. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. It points out, but it has no power to change it. Remember, an Ethiopian can't change his skin, nor can a leper change his spots. So, to redeem them that we might receive the adoption of sons and daughters. Amen. 
And I told you that we can't use, now I'm going to come back to that scripture, but let me just go to the next scripture because I'm going to, I'm going to show you the duality of, remember, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So I'm going to show you the duality of it, but I want to go quickly to the next verse. Aren't you enjoying the fact that you can go verse by verse and you can get a, just not uh, someone pulling out that uh, Daniel was in the lion's den and, and Daniel, did, but we are seeing step by step, amen, the progression of how God speaks into the spirits and into the hearts of believers, amen. Uh, he said, because you are sons and daughters, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. You know, Abba is a, is a very personal term. It's like saying, my father. Amen. It's not just a father. Like they say, uh, George Washington was the father of, of, of America. But let me tell you, Jesus is Abba, Father. He's the one that created everything. He's my father. And if you're a believer, my brother and sister, uh, he's your father. Amen. And we can cry, amen, uh, our father in his spirit. See, the spirit, it's a big S. And I want you to remember that because it's talking about a holy spirit. Amen. Now, let me quickly go to this other scripture. And I want to show you that it's not just dealing with one, it's dealing with a, a complete, uh, uh, it, it's and not just one scripture, it's dealing with, with scriptures that identify, as I told you before. And it's in, uh, go to Deuteronomy 14.2. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I, I just want to show you that we are not going to deviate from from helping you and strengthening you to understand the word of God so that we can be doers of the word and not just hearers only. If you read your devotion today, it says, for thou art a holy people. Now, this is in the book of Deuteronomy. Moses was writing this. Moses said unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar. He wants you to be different from the world system. Why? Because you believe in God. You're a one God believer. All the other nations believed in sun God, moon God, uh, uh, this God, uh, statues, and all those kinds of idolatries. But we believe that there's only one God. There's only one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism that have two parts to it. As you read, water and spirit makes up the one baptism and the reception of the spirit of God. Amen. He said unto himself. So he wants some people, some sons and daughters. That's in the Old Testament. Amen. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ is the, amen, the foundation of the church. We are built upon the foundation of the pop, apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being what? That chief cornerstone, the one that set the measure for uh, the tabernacle, the one that set the measure for the church, the one that, amen, is our example of north, south, east, and west to be squared. He's that foundation, amen. And if you don't build upon the foundation of Jesus, you'll always be caught up in denominationalism or religion. And Nimrod in the Bible is the first clear type, clear type to rebel against trying to do it his way. So I also want you to go to 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter and the 18th verse. Oh, I, I, I want to make sure that, see, we need to walk surely. We need to have an anchor for our souls. We are spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. In 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter and the 18th verse, it, it reads as, follow, as follows. We're getting a little slow this morning. Uh, it says, and will be a father unto you. Abba. 
father. And you shall be my sons and daughters, said who? Said the Lord Almighty. See, we're going to be sons and daughters unto him. Now, <clears throat> I want you to go to, uh, when we talk about adoption, we are talking about the action or the fact of taking another child and bringing them up as your own. And that's what God did for us. Remember Abraham, the Bible says, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham is the beginning of the Jewish nation. This book has a history of the Jewish nation. That was God's chosen people. Amen. But when, amen, we were separated from God through sin, God sent forth his son to bring the whole world together because Israel was the repository of God's truth. They always, that's what a Jew is, is a one God believer. All the other nations around had sun gods and stars and astrology and this and that and, and this and that. But Abraham believed God, and the Bible said it was counted unto him for righteousness. As believers, we are, are, are adopted into that same family because God wanted to, amen, have a body of believers throughout the world. So therefore, when the fullness of time came, amen, God knew the right time to bring this about. Amen. So God uh, brought a, a people, a Jewish nation and a Gentile nation together in one body. That's why the Bible say you are no longer Jew or Gentile. You're no longer bond or free. You are all one in Christ Jesus to make us, amen, one body of believers. Amen. That uh, goes beyond your ethnicity. So, therefore, we are adopted. And, and, and I think that word adopted is a good word to use. But what adoption really means, it means, and I want to go to 1 Corinthians uh, 1.30, and I want to show you what it actually uh, means in regards to our relationship with God, how that we are adopted into the family of God. Believers are adopted into that family. Amen. So, therefore, we get all the rights of natural. Remember, because we were chosen. Amen. Like I told you once that uh, the little child that was born into the family told the adopted child, he said, I'm better than you because uh, you were adopted. He said, no, your mother and father had to have you, but they chose me. So I want you to know that, that the, the body of Christ is a chosen generation, according to 1 Peter 2, 9. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. That's why we can show forth the praises of the one that brought us out of darkness, ignorance, into his marvelous light. Amen. That we are the salt of the earth. We can change cultures. We can change families. We can change things through, amen, him. So I want you to see in 1 Corinthians 30, but look at this. It says, but of him are you in Christ Jesus. Of God, who of God is made unto us. Made. Not that we deserve it. Made unto wisdom righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So when we are adopted into the family, but I want you to really understand that. It means that <clears throat> salvation, being born again, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, receiving the Holy Ghost with evidence, of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give the utterance. I know that some of you are cutting me off right now. But I, I want you to know that that's a reality. Amen. And as a result of it, that is a miracle of a moment. But the making of a saint 
And if you read in any of the epistles that the apostle Paul wrote to the saints that were at Corinth, to the saints that were at Rome, See, the Roman Catholic Church teach that you've got to, like they did uh, Mother Teresa, they said that you've got to prove that your life had two miraculous miracles in your life to be considered for sainthood. They worship saints. But every believer, hallelujah, in the body of Christ is a saint. Amen. We don't deserve it. We, don't, uh, we can't work hard enough. We can't even pray hard enough to become a saint. It's what God hath done for us as he did for Abraham. Believers, we believe God, and he imputed not unto us our trespasses, but he imputed, he charged to our account righteousness because of belief. Amen. Faith in God, confidence in God, trust in God, regardless of what the circumstances is. So anyway, uh, uh, but the making of a saint. So we have to go through a process. You see, you need to know, believer. I'm talking to you, believer. I'm talking to you. Amen. You need to know the difference between your standing, where you're standing. See, you're either saved or, or you're lost. You're either a believer or you're unbeliever. You're either righteous or you aren't right now at this very moment. So that's your standing with God. But your state might be a lot different than your standing. And you need to know the difference. Your standing is, amen, you could, you could be a believer and still be in Egypt. And there are believers that are in, in, in Egypt. Amen. Jesus talked about the, the parable of the prodigal son. He, he left his father and he went out in riotous living. Amen. See, that'll preach. I, I, I just want to teach you this morning. That, that will preach. Amen. But that father, he was out of fellowship. He was not out of sonship. He was just out of fellowship. And his father received him back as what? A son. He said he wasn't even worthy, and that's what God does. So are you in Egypt today? You don't have to stay in Egypt. Amen. Or what is your state today? Are you in the wilderness? See, the wilderness, remember in the wilderness, God took care of them, but they went round and round and round in the wilderness. Are you in the wilderness? The wilderness represents the unsurrendered life. See, you come out of, out of sin, but you haven't, amen, made Jesus the Lord of your life. He don't have the full impact of your life. So you are still, you, you're being transformed. You, you, you're, you're growing, amen. You're still uh, surrendering. You haven't stepped over into the promised land. And see, that's what Cana was. Cana is, is, is the promised land, living in the promises of what God say for your health, for your deliverance, for your addictions, living in the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what uh, you are adopted into, but you need to know your state and you need to know your standing. But in that Cana land, there were giants in the land. Amen. So we are never assured Amen. We just need to know that we are in a fight, amen, for our lives. Like someone said, I'm, I'm running for my life. Amen. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. But I'm running for my life. Amen. Because the devil is out to uh, rob you, steal, kill, and to destroy you. But Jesus came to give us the victory through him. It's a daily walk with him. Amen. So, therefore, you can know your state, whether your state is Egypt, whether your state is a wilderness, or are you living in the promises of God. Remember, there were giants in the land, but, amen, he defeated all of those giants. And you can defeat the giants that come up in yours because we've got, when the enemy comes against us, the Bible says, like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard. Amen. We fly under the banner of the name of Jesus. He's never lost a battle, and he never will. So therefore, uh, we are a 
adopted into the family. And what we have to do, we are not only <clears throat> uh, 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 sanctified, you know, that's a word, sanctification. See, that's a process, sanctified. You know, you when a baby is born, a baby just don't start walking. A baby learn to crawl first. And that's what we've got to, sanctification is the process of, of, of declaring someone holy. But it's a, a, a process that we've got to go through. We keep growing in grace. My question to you, how can you grow in grace? If grace is unmerited favor, you're getting what you don't deserve. How can you grow in it? The way that you can grow in it is become more knowledgeable of your Lord and your Savior. The bigger God gets in your life, the more grace a man can be unmerited favor. Because you can only do what you know. If you know that he's a healer, amen, sometimes you can bypass the doctor. If you know that he's a deliverer, you don't have to go to the therapist. Amen. If you know, amen, that he will provide your need, you don't have to stand in the welfare line. He will provide your need. Amen. If you know that he'll provide, you don't have to sell chicken dinners or fish dinners. If you know that he's a provider. Amen. You don't have to worry. Cast all our cares upon him for he careth for you. Amen. So, it's not only uh, he's made re redemption, he's made sanctification, and he's also made justification. That's a, that's a good word. The Bible says we're justified. Amen. And I told you that the way to really understand that word is to syllabatize it. Just if I've not sinned. Amen. That's how God deals with it. He does that. Amen. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Now, let me quickly go because I only have a short time and I want to get these, these quick verses in to you. Go to the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and we want to begin at the uh, first verse. And I want to go through these. Now, I might not have the time to really uh, spend some time on them, but I, I, I just want you to be aware of it. And you spend some time in it. Amen. The book of Ephesians, the first chapter, it says, Be ye therefore, now this is Paul writing to the church that was established at Ephesus. And it says, Be ye therefore followers of God, believers in God. I'm not talking about Baptist, Catholic, Pentecostal. I'm not talking about Methodist. I'm, I'm talking about followers of God as what? Dear children. So when you were adopted into the family, amen, you were being raised as followers of God, as believers of God. Now, now listen carefully what he says to the sons and daughters that were in the church, the ecclesia. The, the next verse. Listen what he says to them. And I don't want to spend a lot of time in it, but it, it, it's worthy of note. He said, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us. See, do you know what? We can prove how Christ loved us because he gave his life for us. Amen. So we love him. Glory to God. Because he first loved us. He didn't wait until we got it together. He got it together for us. Isn't that great? Isn't that good news? He got it together for us, so we know that he loves us. Amen. So uh, the Bible says, as Christ, and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. He came and got it together with God. Hey, we deserve death, but he shed his blood that we could have life through, through him. And the Bible says, and uh, uh, for a sweet-smelling Savior. Sweet smelling. There is no, amen, that's what the prayers of the righteous is like, a, a sweet smelling Savior. When you're praying for my wife right now, it's like a sweet smelling Savior. Smelling. It, 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 God wants to smell that, that, that sacrifice, that incense that's being offered up for one of the body of, of believers. Amen. We can do it for our children as well. 
Let it be a sweet Go to the next verse. And I want to, want to show you. I just want to quickly go through these verses if I can. But notice here. But fornication. Fornication. Comes from the Greek word pornea. And it's illegal sexual activity. Illegal. And I don't want to spend a lot of time in all uncleanliness or greediness, covetousness. That's greedy. Never satisfied. Let it not be, let it not be once named among you as becoming. Listen to this word here. Saints. Children of God. We are saints of the Most High God. Next verse. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Amen. We need to be careful about that foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient. That's not convenient for us. But rather giving of thanks. Go to the next verse. <clears throat> for this we know that no whoremonger. Is that in the Bible? Yes. You know what a whoremonger is? is a person that prostitutes themselves. And usually talking about a male that will go to uh, 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 no whoremongers, nor unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater. Now, we talk about an idolater. An idolater is one that has images of idols, idols. And I was sharing to you about the difference between a cross and a crucifix. A cross is okay, but a crucifix with Jesus on it is idolatry. Because he's no longer in the cross. He's defeated the cross. We don't want to go back into the past, but we want to. And, and any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Hath any inheritance. You, you know, an inheritance is that after death you're going to receive a reward. Now go to the, to the next. Uh, this is a uh, Yeah. And let no man deceive you. This is the reason we want to know the word of God. So nobody can deceive us with vain words. Oh, he did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he did. And he overcame. Hey, I'm talking about useless words. Hey, for because of these, the things come at the wrath of God. God is not pleased in trying to. God wants to hear his word. Amen. He wants to hear. Say, oh, he was preaching. What is he preaching? Oh, I don't know what he was preaching about, but he sure was preaching. My brothers and sisters, we need to know you can only do what you know. You can only do what you understand. You can run out there and turn your car on, but if it breaks down and you don't have any knowledge about uh, what's in it, where do you go? You got to go to the manual and you got to hear what the owner uh, of that car said in order to understand it. We want to know what our manual says, how to fix anything that breaks down in our lives. The wrath of God come upon the children of disobedience. Are you in Egypt? You're in the wilderness? Are you living in the promises of God? Now I want to quickly go to Romans the 8th chapter and the 14th verse. And I want to kind of dissect uh, these scriptures to you as quickly as I possibly can. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Now, Notice that this spirit is a capital spirit. That is the divine spirit. Because remember, God is a spirit, we are spirits, and the devil is a spirit. But our spirits are. The Bible says, for as many believers as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We've been adopted into the family. Amen. And I want you to see this. Go to the next verse. And I want you to see this and I want you to believe this. Amen. Because the Bible says it. 
for you have not received the spirit hey, uh, of bondage again. See, a small s. It means something. A bondage again to fear. We ain't got the fear. But you have received the what? The big S of adoption. We've been adopted, hallelujah, into the family. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, my Father. I can go to my Father and I can say, my Father, I need. My Father, I want. My Father, I worship you. He's going to treat me. Go to the next verse. I wish I had, had, had time to... The Bible says, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, go to the next verse real quickly. Because I'm not going to have a lot of time this, this morning. My time is running out. And if children, now remember, sons and daughters, then heirs. An heir is that, and heirs of God. Amen. God's got a, got, got, got a reward for us. Amen. I want to go quickly. And we become joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we uh, may also be also glorified together. Glory. That's that doxa in the Greek. And it means preeminence. You've got an inheritance. You're going to inherit something. And I wish I could just uh, keep going on down to the 23rd verse, but I want you to do it because I'm going to have to, amen, be closing pretty soon. But I want to show you a, another scripture. Go to 1 Corinthians 15 and the 45th verse. And, oh, God, hallelujah. If you go down to 23, you'll see what I mean. But here, the Bible says, Paul writing to the church at Corinth, he said, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, the first Adam was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Go to the next verse. Amen. Was made a quickening spirit. How be it, that was not first, which is spiritual. See, because it becomes natural, then becomes spiritual. But that which is natural, and afterwards, that which is spiritual. Next verse. Because I'm going to close. How be it, that was not the first. Uh, the first man is of the earth. The first man, earthly. Remember, I told you earth is, uh, Adam was born of dark earth. Uh, uh, the second man is the Lord from heaven. Isn't that something? The second man is the Lord, the second Adam. There were two creations, the first and the second. Jesus is the last Adam. Go ahead. The creations. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Next verse. And as we have borne, carefully now, the image of the earthly glory. I want you to see your inheritance. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Next verse. And as we, uh, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. The next verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. A mystery is not something that cannot be understood. It means that you need to learn the clues in order to understand it. We shall not all sleep. That's what a believer does. It just sleep. But we shall all be changed. I want you to, to see this glorification process that's coming. Uh, in the next verse. And I'm going to go all the way down to the last verse. In a moment, see, it's going to happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the 
trumpets shall sound, and the dead shall be raised. The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is future. We're going to be changed. Amen. Don't worry about, amen, if you got a short leg like I do down here on earth, it won't be short when I'm changed. Uh, next verse. And remember, I'm just going down verse by verse. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Why? Because, amen, we can't enter into the uh, kingdom of God or into heaven with, with flesh and blood. Uh, 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 but this mortal must put on what? Immortality. Immortality means it cannot be killed. It cannot be destroyed. Next verse. Uh, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death, hallelujah, is swallowed up in victory. Next verse. Death is going to be swallowed up in victory. We're going to be victorious. Everybody want to die. Everybody uh, want to live, but nobody wants to die. But amen. Everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Uh, he says, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Next verse. Where is the victory? He said, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. See, because the law don't have no power. Next verse. Amen. The law doesn't have any power. It just points out. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, talking about believers, the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye. And this is a word to all you NDG believers. Be steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We are born into the family of God. We are adopted into the family of God. So we want to close right now. I've spent far too much time. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this great opportunity that we could share your word and to learn, dear God, that it's not a denomination, it's not a religion, it's a relationship with the God that spoke this world into existence. Help us, O oh God, to understand thy perfect plan for a perfect people. And Lord God, I pray that you impact the life of dear God in the G. I pray, oh God, that you impact the life of my family. I pray that you impact the life of, of those, dear God, that are, are standing in the gap with us, Lord. I pray, dear God, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, amen, that you would lift up, hallelujah, the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we'll be careful in all things to always realize that you are the answer for the world's situation. And I pray that any person that receive you, hallelujah, that you will shout out and say, hey man, I received him as my Lord and my Savior. We will instruct you. We reach out to you. Reach out to us as God reaches out to one another. And remember those that are in prison. And, oh, God, we pray for, oh, God, the sick, those that are shut in. We pray for those that are dealing, hallelujah, with the struggles of life. Strengthen them in the area of their weakness. And we bind that demon in the power of darkness. You've given us authority over scorpions, serpents, and over all the power of the enemy. For you said, nothing, no thing shall enemies harm us. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you and keep you is our prayer for this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you and keep you.